Tumblr, Instagram, New Hive, YouTube, and Twitter, which she uses to question what sharing on the internet means, particularly for women and femmes within a constantly evolving dynamic web culture. Soda said that her work is about girls and for girls in their bedrooms. It breaks down the often gendered boundaries between private and public space and challenges notions of normative self-representation or self-presentation -present and emotional display online. In 2013, Soda participated in Paddles On, the first ever digital art auction and gallery show held by Phillips Auction House in New York, at which she, at which she sold her piece, Inbox Full, an eight hour long uh, webcam video of the artist reading all of the messages, messages in her Tumblr inbox. Soda currently lives and works in Detroit and has exhibited internationally with recent group shows at Alt Space Brooklyn, the Kyber Center for the Arts in Nova Scotia, Sunday Los Angeles, and Tangent Gallery in Detroit. She is currently represented by Anka Colton Gallery in London, where in 2015 she presented her inaugural solo show, From My Bedroom to Yours. So please join me in welcoming Molly Soda. to go to school, I really wanted to pursue photography and I was really interested in making pictures. And halfway kind of through school, I became a bit disenchanted with thinking only in photographs and I kind of started learning about different modes of art. I was doing video art, learning about performance art, and I took a web design class. And it was this web design class that sort of like was for the photo students and they all had to make like portfolio websites, you know, like that kind of thing. And we, we got taught about like these other websites that were sort of like non-linear web pieces and pieces that were websites as art pieces. And I got really interested in focusing on that. So I sort of like freaked out and was like, I don't wanna take photos anymore, but I'm in this program, like how do I like deal with this? And so I actually ended up kind of doing more web-based and video work within my department, which was great. Um, and so my thesis, when I grad, my senior thesis when I graduated was actually a video piece, and it was called uh, Clean Dreams. And it's basically a piece about uh, three girls growing up in the early 2000s in the suburbs. Um, it's loosely based on my life, except their lives are a bit more exciting than my life was when I was 12. Um, and I play every character, and it's sort of supposed to be a kind of a comment on the way that um, sort of like tweens are fed all of these images, like teen movies, she's all that, like someone gets pushed in the pool, like there's all this like crazy like house party drama and you like all you want to do is be older and all you want to do is be in high school and like you're always kind of like failing at achieving this like thing that you think that you're supposed to have so Twin Dreams is sort of something like that sort of like Lizzie McGuire but like a little more real <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna play a little bit <laughs> Nora, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. Do you want to go to the mall? Okay. What's Mary doing? I don't know. Do you want to really call her? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Hello? Mary, let's go to the mall. <laughs> okay. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> what time? Uh, like 30 minutes. Okay. What's Nora doing? I'm right here. Oh, you surprised me. <laughs> I didn't know you were under the line. You were calling, duh. Well, I can go if I can get a ride. 
My parents are at yoga. Okay, well, I've got some room. Hold on. Mom? Where are you? Can you take me, Mary, and Laura to the mall? In half an hour? Fine. Yeah, Mary said I can pick us up. Yeah. My mom is so annoying. She said she can't take us for another hour. That's okay. At least she can take us. Yeah, it's no big deal. I have to get ready anyway. Okay, fine. I'll see you guys around 1.30. Okay, bye chicas. Bye Lauren. Bye Nora. Bye. So that's Between Dreams, and I also made a sequel slash second episode for Between Dreams uh, that came out in the fall of 2013, and I took a really long time working on it, and the second episode is a little bit more like specific. They go to school dance, they get an AM chat fight, you know, like all the really good stuff. Um, so yeah, Tween Dreams is like really special and dear to my heart, and it's sort of like the first big body of work slash piece that I made. Um, and so yeah, I, I like to start with that first. But um, and I was doing a little bit of it's sort of interesting because now I don't do so much uh, character work as I used to, um, which my work has sort of evolved in this way where I think that I was using characters as a bit of like a, a crutch or like something that was like, okay, well this is art because I'm putting on a wig and I'm a character and like sort of struggling with that a little bit. So in, in some of my earlier videos, you'll actually see, um, see other characters that I do. Um, or sort of like these like fake girl. This is gonna be the best spring break ever. Ever. Spring <laughs> break is gonna be so much fun this year. This is gonna be the best spring break ever.
I mean, it's not like super necessary that I sign in. Wow, this is like a joke. <laughs> I think it doesn't need to be on the US. <laughs> oh, your email. I'm pretty sure you have it. Oh no, it thinks I'm a robot. <laughs> asking me for advice to people being like you're ugly or like I hate you or like I hope you die or whatever you know and um, it was really interesting and I think that when it comes to to people communicating with you online especially when they're being negative all they really want is for you to react and for you to just look at it and like respond like I know like when someone when, when, you, when you send something mean, like, all you're doing is refreshing their page to wait until they respond publicly. Like, I'm pretty sure that's what people do. Because I'm like, we've all been there. Um, but anyway, so I made this piece called Inbox Full in 2012, um, which is kind of at the height of all these messages. And these messages had sort of been sitting in my Tumblr inbox forever, and there were thousands of them. And so I kind of recorded this video not knowing how long it would be, what it would turn into, and it kind of just became this, I didn't realize, it, it was 10 hours, like it, it took me 10 hours to read everything in my Tumblr inbox. And so the original video is split up into parts, I think it's, I do six hours straight and then maybe another two and then two hours. Um, so I'm gonna show a little bit from there. So, doing with your stupid fat life. You look like the lead singer of the month. Make a crown and wear it all day. The last picture you posted is giving me the worst fucking headache over it. Thanks a lot. OMG, do you like Lil' Kim? I can't tell if some of your posts, all of them, or none are satirical, serious, either way, or you're very stoned. Either way, I did them. My thoughts, the end. How do you maintain the shape? By the way, you're beautiful. Why is everything you post just attack, attack? How do I make you love me? Hi, plan on dyeing my hair soon from medium dark brown to a pale purple lilac. Any tips on bleaching hair or dyeing hair in general? You look like Nicole 337. <laughs> what do you do when you're sad? I just want to hear you say, Otor Hino Laryngologist in your next eight hour video. XO, 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 XO. Doing Molly's sort of face, death face. Looks like you're still on a really, really, really strong sports head. Oh fuck, I am way too strong for this place. You're so beautiful. You're so beautiful, you're too beautiful. Fuck's sake. I don't know literally falling off the roof here. You like <laughs> your dreams. I don't know if you guys used before, but I'm curious, lol. What do you go to college for? Where do you work? Come does build up the more intensely orgasmers. You're a doll. I actually kind of find it flattering when boys like Ren Joyce and watch me, you know? I think you're cool. Can we be friends? Do you like Wu Tang Clan? <laughs> Do you think it? OMG, I live in the suburbs of Chicago and I'm coming to the city soon to hang out, and you were like the best person in the world. And what if I met you? OMG, okay, well, you're a perfect man and your BF is lucky. Habla español. Right, girl, yeah, nay. If yay, who? Ramona Flowers, I'm on to you, baby. Where do you get all your cool clothes? You are repugnant, awful to look at, not attractive at all, unfortunately. Why don't you shave your armpits? I'm not trying to be mean, it's a serious question. I'm just curious. Okay. <laughs> so, so basically, I made, I made this video and did a 
didn't know like what it would be, and obviously it's this huge piece. And after that video came out, I actually got asked to be a part of the Phillips uh, Digital Art Act auction in the fall of 2013, and I decided to make a new inboxable video. And this one, this is the one that was sold, so it's actually not online. It's like one of my only pieces that's not online. Um, and it's an eight hour video, and I actually read everything all the way through. So it's a little bit, it's more of like, I mean this would count for me as an endurance piece, but that was like a little bit more planned out. Um, it was also the first piece of digital art I ever sold as well. Um, all right, so getting into some of my more recent work, I'm, okay, so I guess we can see what I've been watching lately, which is really gross. Earwax removal and beauty videos. Okay, what I wanted to show you was some beauty videos. So I have this like obsession with YouTube beauty bloggers. I'm not sure what it is. I'm just like super in love with beauty bloggers. And the funny thing is that I watch these, pe these girls and none of them would ever be my friend or like none of them would ever talk to me. But I don't know what it is. I'm just like always like watching them. I think they're really soothing. They have like sort of like, it's kind of like you have a girlfriend like sitting in your room with you, talking to you while like you do your makeup or whatever, you know? Um, so I've always, I've been watching these for years and I've been trying to tackle like how I want to sort of incorporate them into my work without being like, without poking fun at them or without like, without sort of like making them into like a comedic thing because I don't like doing that. Like, as I said with my characters before, I was doing that and now I'm sort of like, no, but like there's something like here. Like there's something more than just like it being like shallow because I don't want to write things about the shallow um, because I think makeup is actually like very important. So when I first started sort of tackling them, I sort of went the route of doing these like weird sort of hybrid me talking about beauty but then me sort of messing with it. Tutorials on something that's like so personal. 
Um, so I tried to sort of tackle this in these videos. Thank you. 
And before when I was doing it, I was doing it on Facebook. I was posting them every day. I was posting a new video every day to Facebook in 2010. And then my Facebook got mysteriously deleted, which I don't know many people where that's happened. But um, I sort of was like, okay, well, I can't put these on Facebook. I'm going to start putting them on YouTube. And YouTube sort of created like this great thing because I feel like people look at my work because they know who I am, but YouTube kind of allows you to like infiltrate and like put your work in there, like within the mass of other stuff. So people are kind of like just stumbling upon your work as well. So it's like a great mixture of people that know me and then people that are like, what is this? Or like, what's going on? Um, so YouTube's been like kind of my favorite way to release video as opposed to something like Vimeo where I feel like it's like, I don't know, Vimeo just feels stuffy to me. Um, so I don't really use it as much. Um, and then, you know, for every like, the thing about YouTube too is like, and the webcam videos that I take, like I'm not gonna lie, like every video that I post probably has like 10 that didn't work that are the exact same video. And they're just like slightly off. Um, even though you would think that like this video or like whatever video I posted is like so embarrassing, I'm still curating. Like I still have like, even if it is like a little embarrassing, I'm still like, okay, but at least my voice didn't crack and like that on that note or whatever. Um, all right, so enough about YouTube. So I'm gonna talk about New Hive. New Hive is sort of something that's changed my work a lot. Um, I started working with New Hive in probably like beginning of 2014, really, and like it sort of transformed my work because it allows you to, it was allowing me to basically do everything that I wanted to do with the web pieces that I wanted to make, which like you have to code and do in like Dreamweaver or whatever program you wanna do. Um, but it took out all of the coding work for me, so I was able to just make standalone web pieces like very intuitively like it, you just open it up and you're like here's a picture and here's this and here's that and, like I can do embed a video and I can do this and it made it more um, like fluid for me um, let's see oh, I think I this one. and so it just like allows I think a lot more um, it just makes, like, I think it just makes it a you able to reproduce, like produce web pieces really quickly and you able to like sort of just be like, okay, like let's just throw this all together. Um, and so it's made me able to make a lot more work in general too, which is great. And New Hive has also been a really great um, kind of platform for me to do more like crowdsourcing projects because I really like to involve the people that follow me in my work. So I've done like quite a few projects where I asked people to submit to me. Um, kind of like how you would ask for zine submissions, but instead it's like for this website or something. Um, and so I've done a bunch of projects. I think my favorite one was the Weather and Heights project where basically I hate Yahoo. Um, Anyway, the Weathering Heights project, I basically asked people to uh, submit videos of themselves dancing to Weathering Heights by Kate Bush, because I was like, this song rules, and like, I was like, this song also, like, the video has like such a good dance to it, and like, I don't even know the dance. Like, I was just like, I wanna see what other people can do. Um, which I feel kinda lame saying that. But, um, but basically, I got all of these submissions, like from people, in their rooms or wherever they were, like in front of their webcams, like dancing to these videos. And like some of them are more like, it's funny also to see like some of them are like a little bit more planned out than others. Um, but I made an archive for them on New Hive.
So if you click on the sides, you can go to like other videos. It's just like an endless ring of videos. Um, and it's also really like heartwarming that people want to send you videos of themselves dancing. Like, I don't know, it's, it's just like a nice feeling to get. So yeah, that was the Weathering Heights project. And it kind of like opened my eyes to like doing more crowdsourcing work. Um, <laughs> quite a few pieces. This is another piece that I did that's also based on submission um, called Story of My Life, which is basically um, just a kind of like a, a collection of, oh God, okay, um, a collection of people's stories, um, just them talking to their webcam and kind of talking about whatever they want. Um, so I ask people to just email me like, tell me a story or like talk about like, something that's like bothering you or tell me like about stuff you like, like whatever it is. So this is just like a nice little like place for all of that. Um, and they're all just located on the side. And some of them are like really like chill and they're just like, this is a mess, sorry. Um, some of them are like really sweet and they're just like fun little anecdotes and some of them are like really serious and like talking about like you know, like people are like crying or people are really upset or people are, are talking about like really private things. And I, I think it's like a nice mix of, of stuff. And I, I think it's a really nice little um, kind of way to incorporate just other voices into my work as well. Um, and so New Hive has also been, also just because I make all my work digital, digitally, like nothing I make is physical for the most part. So I always like kind of struggled as an artist or you know as post college artist being like okay well how do I make money like how do like realistically like how the fuck do you make money as an artist and so my first initial thing was like okay I'll make zines like people want to like people are watching me so I guess I'll make some zines and I'll sell them and so at the beginning I was sort of like making these zines that you could buy for like five dollars and they were sort of like glitter graphics and like uh, collages and what you know whatever like kind of like my what my general web aesthetic is but like on paper printed out whatever um and i was doing that for a little while and then i got more into doing zines that involve a little bit of like a little more of a writing because none of the zines previous to that that was when i was living in chicago um really involved that at all. And then I sort of, uh, with New Hive, I sort of started making digital zines that existed online, and then I had physical versions if people wanted to purchase them. And I did um, three zines that were, um, it was Should I Send This, I Don't Want You to Miss Me, and Kiss Kiss, and they kind of go hand in hand, and Should I Send This is sort of about, um, Should I send this is sort of about like, this one got the most attention, but I don't, I think it's just because I'm naked in half of it. So um, it's sort of about like private things that you don't really want to talk about. Like even me who like tweets about everything that's going on in my life, um, like things that I was like even a little embarrassed to talk about. So then I made Should I Send This and then I made um, I Don't Want You to Miss Me, which I would have to find, um, which is another zine, oh wait, Google, which is a zine sort of about like the residual like, like ex, like relationship kind of lingering in the background of like your interactions and sort of like kind of feeling someone's presence without them being there. And so this zine online anyway was a little bit more, um, was a little bit, I kind of used the online a little bit more to my advantage. Um, so instead I used, um, I 
things like gifts and sounds. I don't want you to miss me. I want you to think about me when you're brushing your teeth, when you're checking the mailbox, when you're at a stoplight, when you had too much candy in your stomach earlier, when your phone dies and you're not near a charger. And I think a big thing about making beans for, for me anyway now is that I want everything that I make physically to also be accessible online. Um, so it's kind of been like a newer thing for me and also incorporating writing into my work, which is like something that I always do, you know, like I always, like I'm on every digit, like, you know, social media platform and I'm tweeting all the time, but I never thought like that to incorporate writing really, other than like, maybe I'll write like, you know, I wrote a script for Train Dreams or something like that. But it was kind of the first time that I was like, oh, like my words have value in an artistic context and it's not just me tweeting. Um, and so I've sort of gotten more into that and more into doing some more poetry. Um, and this is actually something that I haven't shown anyone, so I'm really excited. Um, but I, I'm also like, if you haven't noticed in like the grand scope of what I've been showing a little bit, I do, like karaoke has a big influence in my work. Um, not only do I enjoy doing karaoke, but I also think it's a really like good anxiety relief for me. Um, just like, I'll sit at home, what does this mean? Um, okay, I'll sit at home, oh shit, okay. So I'll sit at home and I'll like practice karaoke videos all day and like you'll see that on my YouTube too. And so I sort of decided to combine the poems that I was writing and sort of karaoke aesthetic with this new piece that I'm working on, which I'll be performing live uh, this month like in various places. Um, so I'm excited to like kind of show this a little bit. That's like a little snippet of something I'm working on, which was cool to show. Um, but yeah, it's sort of like combining poetry and like already my webcam videos and karaoke, which is always something I'm obsessed with, so it sort of makes sense. Um, so I don't want to talk for that much longer because I also know like you can, I am so surprised that people are like still here and listening to me. So um, just because I did a talk once with someone who was legitimate. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. But um, okay, so I'm going to talk about my show, my solo show, that, which was in November, um, and it was at Anka Cultus Gallery, um, and it was sort of my first like big girl show, like the first thing that like was a solo show that wasn't like totally DIY without like just me like kind of being like, can I borrow someone's projector? So. Um, <laughs> So this was in London, uh, we actually ended up, it's all digital work that I showed, so it's all a combination of um, some New Hive pieces and then also some YouTube video pieces, but all from 2015. Uh, and we decided to transform the gallery into like kind of a more intimate space just because I believe that my work is best seen in your room alone. So I was like, okay, well how do we do this in a gallery? I really don't like 
galleries. Like you, just kind of like the feeling of being in a gallery. Um, so we painted everything pink. We got some bean bags. We like, you know, there was there's a lot of like cute decisions made to sort of make it make sense with my work because all of the pieces in the show are also pieces that are filmed at home, mostly in my room and then some, you know, around the house. Um, and even the TVs match the wall, which was not planned. Um, there's some pictures from that. And just like on a series of devices, so we used iPads, screens, we used, I think eventually we'll get to the some craft cell phones. Um, and a broken TV as well. But I'm crying in this video, so it totally works. But yeah, no, it was, I think it, it just like made sense to, to do that to the gallery. I would never like want to show, if I had a choice, I would never want to show my work in a way that wasn't kind of true to the way that, you know, that I live, you know, so. Um, and the cracked cell phone is for sure my favorite. So that was, that was in London. Um, and it was all, and then all of the work that I sold in the show was sold on a USB. So everything was digital and everything that was sold was sold on a custom USB, which I was trying to find a picture, ah, here. So then there's all these like really cute bedazzled USBs that I, that I made. <laughs> which took me a really long time. Um, so that was the show. Um, I, just in interest of time, I'm not gonna show any of the pieces from the show, um, cause I kind of wanna talk about, I kind of wanna talk about mutual projection and then leave it at that. Um, so, mutual projection, which is what is up right now, which is sort of why we're here, sort of, um, is a piece that I made is this a thing that I want? Okay, here we go. Is a piece that I made um, kind of with this like, with the idea of archiving a non-physical thing. Um, Cause I've been thinking about this a lot, sort of the way that we have like all these interactions with people on our devices, but like the idea of like seeing it manifested physically is like not something that we think about that often. Like imagine if I like printed all of my photo booth like pictures or if like anyone did, like what would that look like in a room? Or like what would all of our text messages look like in a room? Or what would all of our emails or whatever, you know, look like in physically? Because it just feels like it's like, it's like as quickly as you like send the text, it's like as quickly as you like sort of almost like forget about these relationships that we've built that are just like sitting in our phones waiting for us to revisit them and like make us feel horrible sometimes. Um, so I sort of wanted to just like see see that. So basically, this is between me and um, someone that I met. I don't know what this means. Um, okay. Uh, oh my god. This is terrible. Um, this is basically between someone that I met over the summer last summer and sort of like a weird thing that happened where I met this person who was kind of passing through town and we were obviously like attracted to each other but like nothing happened so we continued our conversation via texting and it turned into like this giant thing where I think we were both like, we, we kind of got to know each other via our phones even though like we had met in person but like we weren't physically in the same space and we liked each other so we like, started talking via text, like constantly, like it was constant. And so I sort of wanted to encapsulate that like tiny blip in time for like you and like, which I think not, I'm not the only person that's ever done this. Like we all have these things where like we get to know people via our devices and like grow fond of people via these devices and sort of like grow reliant on these interactions. Like, um, and so I sort of wanted to like encapsulate that like really brief kind of whirlwind romance that's sort of like 
not, it was, it's sort of like, you're sort of just like mutual projection. Like we were both like just fucking projecting onto each other. And it's sort of like I was telling someone earlier, I was like, it's sort of like eating a bag of Cheetos for dinner when like you, and it like, you know, you're not hungry anymore, but you feel terrible. Um, and so that's kind of what like doing this sort of thing is to a certain degree. So I printed out all of the text messages from when we first met to when we met again in real life. And then the rest of it is sort of like a mystery. Like you can fill in the blanks or whatever you want to do. Um, and it, it was just, I don't know, I just really wanted to see it sort of physical. Um, so I'm gonna end that there because I think I've been talking for a while. Cool, thank you. <laughs>I think we have the room until five, just so Oh, know. until five? I think so. Oh, good. Uh, I was wondering, uh, you said you want to present like physically, how are you presenting it? That last oh, the last piece? Messages, it's yeah. up in the, the Breezeway Gallery. Oh, that's where we're going to look. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you'll see it. Um, I wish I had pictures of it to show, but I guess we'll like literally get pictures in, so it's fine. Can I tell my side story? <laughs> There's a picture on the Facebook page. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. But you'll see. You said that at karaoke one, you're going to perform that like, live in front of a group. Mm -hmm. Is that the first time you're doing something like that? or? I've done like live performance before, but it's the first time I've done, and I've done readings before, but this is kind of like a nice combo, I think. Like I feel the most positively about going into that than like anything else I've done. Do you feel any pull to like explore more of like live performance art or do you really like the going through a screen like that kind of portal? I like both. Um, honestly, I think live performance is just harder because I just have this like need to archive in this weird way or this need to like have it be like also online but like in a way that's not like here's a video of me like doing something live, you know what I mean? Right, right, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah? I mean, it's really interesting because I think everyone's freaking out about selfies, even though like self-portraiture is like a thing that's been mm -hmm. a thing for a really long time. And like now that everyone has a phone, it I think it's rad. I mean, I don't know. I think that like it's I think that selfies in general are positive because women are able to take control of their own image instead of like having some dude photograph them, you know? Um, and I think that's really great. And also just like taking a photo of yourself and being like, damn, I look good today, and like posting it online, like that's sick, like why not, you know? So, yeah. Uh, how do you differentiate like between, I was in the, the US series where you had the dabber. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, in, as I understood your talk, they're not the art, they're just the yeah. entertainer. Yeah. So how do you make those decisions? Like, oh, all my work is digital, but I've made this, you know, meticulously crafted space feelings, you know, the insult to me would seem to be a part of it. The USB would seem to be a component of the art. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in that distinction. Yeah, well, I think the thing with the USB is that it is a component because it gives you something to, like, take with you, like it's a souvenir, and that's what people really want. Like, when people buy art, they want to buy souvenirs, and something I'm slowly realizing as a digital artist who's, like, making work, and they're like, well, I can see this on YouTube. Like, why should I buy this? You know what I mean? Um, so people just want a little bit of like an extra like thing. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? I mean, it makes sense. So then do you feel bad about commodifying your work in that sense? No, I have to, like, I have to make money, you know? Like, and it's not like I'm doing, and also like with all of my digital work, like it all stays online. And the model that I have for pricing it is actually the more views something has, the more valuable it is. So it's not like I'm like, selling something and then being like, I'm deleting this off YouTube. I'm literally just making money off of work that I've made that is important to me. Yes? How has the influence of needing to support yourself um, through your art, has that had any type of effect on how you approach your art? How I make my work? Yeah. Um, yes and no.
know. I think it's made me a lot more conscious, con like, it's made me think a lot more about sort of like how to sell my work and also that digital art is something that is very new and it's not necessarily the most like profitable market. Um, like there are collectors who buy it, but honestly, like if you're making physical work, you're 10 times better off. Like, so it's kind of made me think more about like, okay, how can I, instead of just selling digital work, like how can I make things that people want to buy? Which like the zines come in, but that's kind of like a smaller thing. Um, but I hate the idea of making prints of like digital pieces because I feel like it just flattens everything. So I'm still sort of trying to work in like, what's the best way to like sell art objects, but keep my digital work going, but then also just like, it's really people want souvenirs. Like, so it's kind of trying to navigate that and trying to figure out like, how can I support myself, but how can I stay true to my work, which is hard. Yeah. And when you create, <coughs> do you create it with in mind the end, the person that's going to go buy this or the souvenirs? Uh, sometimes I feel like the um, creating something digitally and publishing it, it's like, who am I writing this for? Who is going to be the person that sees me? So am I writing to include this individual? Am I creating it for myself? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you balance that creating um, for others to enjoy versus the personal aspect of creating art? I don't know if you've been able to balance that. It's super hard. I mean, well, first of all, I don't create any, if I'm making a digital piece, I'm not creating it with collectors in mind usually. I'm creating it with like me and my audience in mind, which is usually not collectors. Um, but it's hard because I, you know, like I was saying, like you kind of grow these defense mechanisms where you're like, well, someone might be mad about this or someone might pick on me for this or like this might get critiqued this way. So you kind of, that starts influencing the work that you make because you start like building up defenses in it. And I have to like stop sometimes and be like, okay, do I want to make this? Or like, am I just like anticipating what other people are gonna say? And, or am I changing my work because of this and that? And I think it's, it's good to keep in mind, but also like when you're online and you're very public, you are like, there's like a lot of responsibility that comes with it. And I have to be sort of aware of that too. And I have to think about that a lot. Mm -hmm. Wait, yes, me? No. Oh no, sorry, I didn't see you. I can't see you. <laughs> Because I like followed you on Tumblr when you were still in college. Mm -hmm. 
that's like I think the biggest downfall. Um, but I try not to filter what I say online if it's just about me. Like obviously I'm never gonna go online and be like, I'm so mad at my friend right now. Like I would never do that. But it's like it's always like about like just like singular to me. But I definitely like do get like a little like embarrassed or a little shy when I have someone in mind who's like maybe looking at it or like perceiving me in a certain way. And then in terms of the way that my work has evolved since college, I think it's changed a lot. I mean, I think that um, I think that I'm a lot less of a character, like I was saying earlier, and I think that I play like like as I was saying at the beginning of my talk, like I used to kind of play more characters. I used to do like I'm gonna put on a wig and I'm gonna like film this like this and I'm gonna like do a backdrop or like a script. Like I'm gonna write out all these things and I'm sort of doing like less acting. 